for hearing you uh, say that you might have lost your arm. Got me thinking. Um, and I'm, I'm imagining that you're the sort of person, stroke artist, that if you were to lose your arm, after whatever results in operation had healed, the possibilities for you, I, a, a prosthetic arm is probably not enough for you, is it? You probably would not, would, I'm imagining you might take that as a wonderful opportunity to try something, a different augmentation that <laughs> other people might just think, oh, I'll have a you know, prosthetic arm. You might want something else. Um, there's a friend of mine, Mark Pauline, who's from Survival Research Labs, where they sort of make these robots that kind of fight each other and spew fire and, you know, and the, the sort of performances they do are often dangerous for, for, for the audience. And there's been a person killed in, I think it was in Spain, uh, during one of these things. But um, Mark, as a bike. It's actually, a, it's actually a truck reversing into a wall. It wasn't actually a product of the performance. Yes. Okay, and uh, anyway, Mark blew up, blew up his his, his hand, you know, and uh, they they you know so so when you kind of see his hand, it, it's just this kind of lump of meat with a couple of um, you know a couple of digits, and you know what was his big toe stuck for a thumb, you know, stitched on for a thumb, um, and I, I always kind of said to Mark, hey, you would have been better off amputating your hand or what was left of it, left of it um, halfway up your arm and, and gotten the prosthesis. But he's quite, he's quite, quite happy with what he's got now. But, uh, you know, it is interesting also philosophically, uh, and, and uh, Liz is in a better position to evaluate this kind of sort of mind game or philosophical game um, where, you know, you begin to lose bits of your body and you replace them with, say, mechanical parts, you know. At what point uh, do you feel that your body is no longer your own, you know? Is it going to take, you know, uh, removing the whole of your body? But we know with um, paraplegics that, uh, yeah, most of the, the feeling and sensation in their body goes, and they, you know, they're, they're really only functional in, in very limited ways. But it's kind of interesting to imagine, uh, you know, if you started to re replace all the parts of your body, at what, at what point would you sort of become other than human? And, and I think that's, that's interesting. And, uh, Might that, that be a future piece of artwork? Or is that too far? <laughs> well, the other, the other question that people have begun to ask me now is, what are you going to do with your dead body? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I know I'm, I'm sort of not as young as I was anymore, but uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to fall over, you know, tomorrow. Well, but there are some interesting possibilities. I mean, I, I might plastinate my body and uh, maybe animate it mechanically, you know. Uh, that might be interesting. Um, or uh, there's a company in California that will compress the carbon of your ashes and produce a little diamond uh, that your loved one might wear on, on, on their finger. <laughs> that might be a, you know, a possibility. Um, you could cryogenically preserve your body uh, so that at some imagined future, your body might be revived. I was at a transhumanist conference, and uh, there was a guy there from a cryogenics company, Alcor, that was trying to sell insurance policies. For, for freezing your body. And, um, and, and it was like at that time, this was about, again, eight or nine years ago, at that time it was something like about 150,000 American dollars, right? And uh, I, I said, well, I really can't afford that. And he said, hang on. He said, for 60,000, we can just freeze your head. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, you know, being awakened at some imagined future. <laughs> And looking down, and there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs>